Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets tutorial in Practical Sheets. Today we're going to create a custom sidebar with a form so you can easily include new data in your sheet. Let me show you what we're going to do. Let me show it to you in action. We have a basic table with company and product. And here we're going to add a custom menu where we can create a company. It will display this custom sidebar with the title you want, both in the sidebar and the title you want in the form. And you can just add a new company, Samsung. And the name of the product will be Galaxy. And you can just add it and you'll have it here. You could even include drop downs if you want or much more things, but this is a very basic tutorial so you can easily learn how to create sidebars and uh, add forms and especially, most importantly, connect it with the table you want in your sheet. Just a very easy way to add new data to your sheet without having to go to the sheet. And especially if you have a lot of rows, you have to go up until the last row when you, maybe if you have formulas, you don't know which column you have to uh, modify. So this is a very practical way to protect your data uh, from unwanted edits. I know you're going to love it. If you don't want to hear me 20 minutes talking about this, you can just go to the Patreon page and download the template and start using it right now. Thank you all so much for watching and special thanks to all of my patrons. Let's begin. Here we have a table, a very simple table, and we're going to create a sidebar to add products to this table. So let's go to extension subscript. We need to do two or three functions. The first function we need to do is just a menu function, an unopened function. It always has to be called like this. That will create a menu which will allow us to open the bar. Let's create this menu with spreadsheet app dot get UI as in user interface. And under this get UI, we're going to create a menu, create menu. Let's call this custom. Under custom, we're going to add an item. The first item, and for now, for this video, the only item we're going to create will be called create company. And we're going to call a function that we haven't created that will be called open customer sidebar. Let's copy this. We're going to add another function called Precisely open customer sidebar, open and close parentheses. Let's open and close uh, brackets. Let's save this and let's test it. We're going to run the unopen function. It's the same as just refreshing. However, I just realized that I forgot something is that at the end of our menu, call this add to UI. Let's save this again. Let's refresh. And here I should have a new custom menu with a create company, knowing it does not do anything because our function is empty. Let's go back to it. And now we're going to open our sidebar. We'll also need this spreadsheet app get UI. So I'll call it. And then we're going to call the mod the method show sidebar. Show sidebar needs uh, I'm going to zoom this out a bit, needs an user interface object. Normally, we'll do it with HTML output. So before our sidebar, we're going to call the HTML service and create an HTML output. For now, let's create a very simple output in a HTML. We're going to call this my first sidebar. And we're going to store this in an H in a variable called HTML. And we're going to put it here. Let me see if the sidebar needs any other thing. I think only the object is necessary. Yes, HTML. That's it. Let's save and let's try it out. Just custom create a company. I need an authorization the first time. Let's go to our account, advanced. Go to Untitled Project, Allow, and here it is, OK? In the HTML output, let's set the title as Create Customer. 
but I, I, I erased this ish, this HTML content. Let's do it again. Now here it is. Okay, perfect. So when I want to do something more complex, this is uh, doing it all inside quotation marks could be very difficult. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this and going to change this method to create HTML output from file. And we're going to create, we're going to include a file. It's called this um, create customer form. And we're going to create an HTML file that has to be called exactly like this, create customer form. And here I'm going to paste the same tags we had before. Let's save it and let's try it out one more time. So it should should not change anything. The only difference is that now I'm not doing it. I'm not creating the HTML inside here, but inside here. Now we can create our form. So there are many ways to create forms. The easiest one is to create a form tag. And for now, we're just going to create two very simple uh, inputs. The input has a couple of things. The first thing is the type. That in this case, let's do text. And secondly, we have to put a name. The name of this, uh, the way in which form is going to refer to this input, this specific input. This is the company. So we could add a lot of other things, ID and more, but for the moment, let's do it like this. Let's do another one, type text. And the name will be product. Finally, let's add a submit button. And let's call this add. That's it. Let's see how it shows. Very simple. We could add, we could include this, each of these in a div tag, just so it looks just a bit nicer. We could even try to input it to uh, format it better. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Here it apparently it works. Let's save again. Just a little bit better. You could even go to Bootstrap and copy this head and replace for this other head. Let's save. Sorry, it's this one. It's this one. At least you can see that the, the font is changing. The good thing about Bootstrap is that, for example, you could include all of this inside a div and put as a class container. This is exclusive for, for Bootstrap. Format it again, save it again, and try it again. And with this container, we just have nicer margins and you can add much more things. You could even, with this, you can add classes for the button very easily. Don't want to spend too much time here. But you could add, for example, this class button primary. And just like that, you have a nicer sidebar. But what I really want is to, first, it could be nice to have a, to know what is this about which is which. So there are two ways of doing it. We could do a label or we could just include this placeholder and here call this company. Also here. Let's see how it looks. Oh, it looks nice. Or you could have a label on the left or on top so that you know what is this about. The nice thing about placeholder is that once you start writing, it removes it. I think it looks a bit cleaner this way, but there are a couple of ways of doing this. Okay, but now the functionality of this, and uh, maybe may the trickiest part. So we're going to create here inside our body, 
uh, a script tag where we're going to include the code. And what I need is a function that will process all of this and send it to Google Apps Script because these are two different systems, let's call it. One is this JavaScript that is processed inside our Chrome or our Explorer and Google Apps Script, which runs in the servers, in Google servers. So these are two different, are the same language, but are slightly different how they are processed. So you need to communicate uh, to have a, a bridge of communication between both of them. So how do you do this? We create a function that uh, we can call it send information. And we're going to bring all of this form and we're going to send it to uh, Google Sheets. How do we do it? With this Google, dot script dot run and we're going to call a function a function that lives here in google apps script so let's create a new function that is called add new company we will receive the form and we're going to add it to google sheets very easily spreadsheet app get active spreadsheet this get active spreadsheet method connects to our current script given to our current sheet given that this script in this particular project the script lives inside our file then when i tell him to get active spreadsheet it knows that it goes to the parent in other cases it may not work let's do get sheet by name and select this sheet that i hadn't i haven't given it a proper name so let's call it com let's call these companies and here we're going to connect to these companies and finally i'm going to use the easiest way to add new data that is with a pen row a pen row receives an array so you need to always have these square brackets and inside of it we're going to add our company and our product remember that i had this name company and this name product their key because this is how we're going to identify them within my form so it's form.company and form dot product and that's it just one line save it what i'm missing is how to call well first i'm missing to call after this run the name of my function so this is called add new company with the parentheses on the form add new company form and but i'm not calling this function anywhere so where will I call it? There are many ways of doing this. We're going to use an unsubmit attribute and we're going to call here our send information. That's it, as easy as that. I forgot here to put the parentheses and put this. This means that this function as a parameter or argument is, is sending all the names it can find. Okay, let's save it again create a company apple and then iphone 16 and let's add it and here i have it however this is getting blank there are a couple of ways of doing this there is a, a default behavior that these hcmls may have so for avoiding this we're going to do event dot prevent default because the, the default behavior of the button submit is to go to another HTML, another file, and it's not finding it. So this is why we need this. Let's try it again. And let's do Amazon and Fire. Perfect. What we could do is erase this. Let's try resetting the form. So let's give uh, the form an ID, my form. And let's try to do my form dot reset see if it works i have to load it again excellent it works and it works okay that's it we could do a lot of other things add drop downs add images uh, well the sky's the limit in html this is the nice thing about doing this that you could do a lot of things uh, different sections different forms different uh, almost like a mini web page 
So because it's a web app that you have here inside your sheets. Okay. Needless to say, this does not work in your cell phone. It will just work on the desktop. Hope it works. Hope it's useful. See you next time.